Hey guys, James with TFB TV. Today on TFB TV, we're talking about the brand new Galil Ace Gen 2. What's different and what's the same between the Gen 2 and the original Ace, and which model I think is the best. Let's get started with a very brief history of this gun. I already went over this at length in my initial Galil Ace review, so I'll drop a card right here, probably forget about it, if you want a more in-depth look at the Ace's history. You can also just go ahead and skip to the next chapter if you would prefer to get reliable historical information from a good channel like Forgotten Weapons instead of questionable innuendo from a shit-tier gun blogger like me. In the 1950s, the Israelis adopted the FNFAL. The FAL was, and remains, a fantastic rifle. However, the Belgian FAL was not optimized for performance in arid environments such as the Middle East. During the Six-Day War of 1967, the Israelis, although triumphant, found that the FAL was unreliable in the desert as a result of the sandy environment and the additional maintenance that it required in those conditions. On the other hand, the AK-47s used by the Israelis' enemies were reliable and required less maintenance than the FALs in these desert conditions. The Israelis therefore undertook to make a more sophisticated AK-type rifle. Designer Yisrael Galil started with what is regarded as one of the most superior AK designs, the Valmet RK-62, and he built the Galil as a modified and an improved version of the Valmet. In fact, the first Galils were manufactured on Valmet receivers. The Galil was chambered in 5.56 like the M16. However, the OG Galil was a bit of a hog, with some variants weighing up to 10 pounds. It also had some room to improve in the accuracy and modularity categories. Accordingly, four decades later, in 2008, IWI modernized the original Galil and named this updated version the Galil Ace. The Ace reduced the weight of the original Galil by integrating a polymer lower receiver, which you can see here, bringing the weight down to about 7.5 pounds. Accuracy was drastically improved through several modifications, including the use of the two-stage Galil sniper trigger. A folding and collapsing stock similar to the M4 was added for better ergos, as was a full-length Picatinny rail along the top for optics mounting. Now, back when I reviewed the original Galil, which by the way, this is not a review of this gun. If you wanna see a review, go back and look at the original Galil Ace. We're just talking about the changes today between the Gen 1 and the Gen 2 and which one I prefer. But in that review, I said that the fit, finish, construction of these rifles is top tier. I mean, truly, it's right up there with Swiss and German rifles that I've handled in the past. Accuracy was excellent and ergos were pretty good. One of my chief complaints, however, was the fact that the Galil used an M4 style stock without using an actual M4 stock. My only negatives, number one, it kind of feels like they could have put an AR buffer tube on the back so you could put an AR-15 stock. You would have a ton of stocks available. I don't know why they didn't do that. It often seems like IWI reinvents the wheel more than they should making proprietary parts when more common solutions are already out there. Like why make an M4 style stock when you can just use an M4 stock? Like the stock that you and I have eight or nine copies of just sitting under our workbenches. Funny thing, when you make a complaint on a YouTube video and the issue actually gets addressed, then you know for sure you're the one who did it. No, I'm kidding. I very seriously doubt anyone at IWI watches my videos and even if they did, it's dubious that they would give a shit. It just feels good when manufacturers actually listen to users, consumers, and make improvements. A Getting a little chilly in here, boys. I feel a draft. And I think it's because the winds of change just blew in the Ace Gen 2. So what's different between the Gen 2 and the Gen 1? Well, you probably gleaned from context the main improvement, and this is a huge one, the biggest one. They ditched the proprietary stock bullshit and are now using an AR stock tube, which means you can use an AR stock body now. Anyone you choose that can fit a carbine buffer tube. Massive improvement. The stock still folds. It still has this really awesome sling loop back here. The main change is that it now uses an AR buffer tube. If you order the rifle version, you will get a Magpul CTR stock and a riser. And if you get the brace pistol version, you will get the SB Tactical SBA3 brace. The second major improvement is 
the use of a free-floating M-Lock handguard. This is another huge improvement. The Gen 1 used a pick rail handguard that was relatively uncomfortable, like cheese grater pick rail, unless you ran it with the plastic handguard covers in place, which kind of defeated the purpose. And it was also kind of girthy to grab on. This rail, on the other hand, is ergonomic, it's stealthy, it feels stable, it incorporates QD sling points. At least on this pistol version, you've got like a half dozen M-lock points on either side and then an another few underneath the handguard. You've got a buttload of mounting options and the rail almost, you can see here, almost seamlessly integrates with the top rail of the upper receiver and it's kind of dovetailed in right here. So it matches up quite well. And I gotta say, this thing feels extremely robust. Yet another big improvement, the Ambi Safety has a much shorter and more ergonomic throw, if you can see right here, making it a lot easier to engage and disengage the safety on the Gen 2 than the Gen 1. IWI also says that the trigger has an updated profile. I didn't really notice. It still has a great trigger like the Gen 1, albeit the reset's a little lengthy. And we have yet another pretty significant change. There's a new barrel length on the way. With the Gen 1, you had your option of eight inches or 16 inches, but now IWI is going to be offering a 13 inch barrel. And I applaud this change because there's almost no velocity drop between the rifle length 16 inch and the 13 inch version in 762 by 39, but conversely, the 556 pistol in Gen 1 has an eight inch barrel. 5.56 out of an 8-inch barrel is pretty much a waste of powder, so the 13 is a much better option, but we'll get to that in more detail in just a moment. Finally, many of you may not know that IWI made 545 Gen 1 Galil Aces in 5.45 by 39. Because of the positive reception, mostly from Russophiles and anime enthusiasts who believe that the 5.45 has anything at all to offer over the 5.56, the 545 will now be a regular option in the Gen 2 guns. Ooh. Excited yet? Good, because these guns are shipping today. The 7.62x39 in 8 and 16 inches and the 16 inch 556 model are available right now. The other models are being made in Israel and they're going to be shipped over soon. So other than the razor sharp wit that you come here for at TFB TV, here's where you're really making your money on this video. I imagine that there's going to be four or five, six other videos on YouTube just today, just talking about the Gen 2 Galil Ace. I'm going to discuss with you which version that I think you should get. And I've got a bit of a controversial opinion here on this, but I am prepared to defend that answer with facts, logic, and possibly threats of violence against you or your family if you publicly disagree with me. I had both versions of the Ace-1, the 223 and the 76239. As much as I liked the Ace, I didn't hold on to the 223 model for very long because I felt that the Galil, like most AK variant rifles, was overgassed for such a mild cartridge and felt recoil from the 556 was like a 300 blackout from an AR instead of a 223 from a seven and a half pound rifle. Moreover, for some reason, the 556 version, which is a less powerful cartridge, is a third of a pound heavier than the 76239 version, which is weird. I'm not sure I even believe it, but I, that's what it says on IWI's website, and I don't have the 556 version to weigh because, like I said, I got rid of it because I am a massive pussy. On the other hand, the 76239 version was superb. It accepts and runs well with all kinds of regular ass AK magazines, shitty 76239 ammo, and we got MOA accuracy with reasonably inexpensive ammo. I'm going to try to remember to drop a card to that video, but we did a Galil Ace versus AK-47 showdown in another video, and the Galil effing cleaned up. I was nervous that the results that I got were some kind of mistake, but my online research found that we weren't the only ones to get this type of accuracy out of the 16-inch Galil Ace in 76239. Also, 76239 is still relatively cheap. While prices are, yes, of course, higher than they were like two years ago, you can still get a case of Russian 76239 for 350 bucks if you look around hard enough. 
between mag compatibility, excellent accuracy from the 7.6239 version, cheap ammo, recoil that was more proportionate to the cartridge, I thought the 7.6239 was the way to go. The 223 was a little over gassed, a little under velocity is that a word? In the 8 inch pistol version. And the 545 is just 556 for people who want to be different purely for the sake of pissing everyone else off. So back to the 762 by 39. Do you get the rifle or the pistol? With the Ace One, I didn't even think about it. If I'd gotten the pistol, I would have wanted to SBR it instead of using the brace that it came with. That's a little bit of a pain in the ass with the Gen 1 because you have to spend about $150 to get the Ace proprietary stock. Then that requires gunsmithing to change it from the brace to the stock. I'm sure there's probably third-party options out there that I'm totally unaware of, and the proprietary ACE stock is okay, but I would have liked some different options for an SBR, especially without gunsmithing. Fortunately, all that's changed with the ACE 2. Now that the Numero Dos uses an AR buffer tube, you can more or less pick the stock that you like. Best of all, no gunsmithing required. So if you have permanent brain damage, like an FN pistol owner, even you can swap the brace out for a stock. No extra gadgets, no extra work, literally 10 seconds plus the stock of your choice. So with that said, I think I'm now going to recommend the eight inch pistol version of the 7.62-39. Why? Glad you asked. The pistol version has an eight inch barrel, roughly half the length of the 16 inch barrel from the rifle version. It's much smaller, it's over a pound lighter, and it's one bad little bitch. If you were getting the 223, there's a massive ballistic penalty. 223 is a small light round, it's basically a glorified 22, but it gets its power through fragmentation. That is, it more or less explodes upon impact with a soft target. But the issue with this is that 556 must hit a certain velocity before it'll fragment at least 2,500 feet per second, but preferably 2,700 FPS or more if you want it to reliably fragment. A 10-inch AR-15 can rarely accelerate a 223 round to 2,700 feet per second, so anything shorter than that, and you're just basically punching tiny 22 holes into your target, especially at distance. On the other hand, the 7.62-39 is nearly three times heavier than the 5.56 at 124 grains or so on average. That's the same weight as like a mid-level 9mm projectile. It also has relatively lower powder volume, meaning that most of the gunpowder is burned off sooner compared to the 223. For example, the much smaller, much lighter 223 round loses 600 feet per second, going from a 16-inch barrel to an 8-inch barrel, while the AK will only lose about 400, 450 feet per second when you go from 16 to 8, even though it's two and a half times heavier. Moreover, since the 7.6239 is more powerful than the 5.56 inside of 300 yards, more or less, and it relies upon energy from its greater weight, larger diameter, etc., for performance rather than fragmentation, that means that not only does it lose less velocity than the 5.56, but it retains effectiveness compared to the 5.56. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that I think the best bet for the Gen 2 gun is the 8-inch 7.6239, although the 13-inch is a strong contender. But in my experience with the Gen 1, the 7.6239 was more accurate. It's lighter for some reason. The recoil is more proportional to the round, while the 223 runs a little hot out of the ace. And more importantly, the 762 by 39 remains effective out of a shorter barrel, while the 223 does not. With the new stock configuration on the Gen 2, it's now a no-brainer, especially if you want to SBR this thing. In fact, the Ace 2 might now be the easiest AK-style rifle to SBR since you don't need any gunsmithing to do it. While most AKs need to have a gunsmith to replace the rear trunnion, add a stock, whatever, that can sometimes approach $1,000 for that conversion. The ACE-2 only requires that you e-file your Form 1, which at least as of now has only taken a few weeks, less than a month to go through. After that happens, it only takes a few seconds for you to pop on the AR stock of your choice, and now you're in business with essentially an Israeli crank, no gunsmithing required. Guys, thanks a ton for watching. As usual, thank you to our sponsors, Ventura Munitions, Blue Alpha, and 
Top Gun Supply, your online shooting sports superstore. But thank you most of all to you guys for watching. Thank you to our Patreon supporters. Make sure you check us out on Patreon and Subscribestar at patreon.com slash tfbtv, subscribestar.com slash tfbtv. That money doesn't go straight to me. That money goes to pay all the guys on the channel and the bloggers on tfbtv. It basically just goes into our budget. So it helps a lot to get support. Plus, we give away four guns a month to our five and ten dollar supporters. Go check us out. Thanks again for watching guys. Take care. <music>